above them Vikings, baby. Woo! Big Seals National Football Show. Vikings got better, too, today. Trading deadline. Now, listen, just because you don't see any movement right now doesn't mean that a trade hasn't been submitted to Park Avenue. If the trades are submitted before the 4 o'clock p.m. deadline, and you're also given a little latitude if you're in the middle of negotiating. So if you're negotiating, according to the NFL collective bargaining agreement, you still have a chance to consummate a deal. If you are talking to a respected team right now, you get a chance to close that deal up and then the league will report it. And as long as you're working on a deal by the 4 p.m. deadline, you don't have to have them submitted by 4 p.m. You can still be working on those deals um, by the 4 p.m. deadline. So keep an eye on everything. Um, if, uh, if anything happens, we'll let you know here. So we'll keep you updated on that. Man, I'll tell you what, you don't want Kareem Hunt going to the Buffalo Bills also. Woo! Man, man, would that be something else, man. Yeah, TJ Hawkinson to the Vikings. That makes them better. That makes them better. Look out. Please hit the like button. We're going to get to the NFL top quarterback play so far this year after week eight. The NFL power rankings, according to Big Sills. And, oh, by the way, too, guess what we have here? We have the MVP. The MVP odds. Okay, the MVP odds. Let's do the power rankings first. Oh, yeah, baby. There is no question. This list is maybe, maybe one of the most surprising. Okay, you dismantled the Vikings. You sure did. I remember a team like the Giants beating the undefeated Patriots in the final game of the regular season. And then that Giants team coming back to beat them in the Super Bowl. Easy. Relax. Postseason's coming up. Things are different all the time in the postseason. Your boy hasn't done anything yet. He's played well. He's played well. Played well. Josh Allen is special. He's special. Here, let me just give it. We kind of broached this a little bit yesterday, but here's Jalen Hurts' numbers, by the numbers. If he continues the game that he's playing right now, he'll have, like GT said, he'll have thrown for 4,000 yards. Thank God he's up his touchdown total. 515 attempts, 345 completions, which is kind of low, very 80s-ish. For 4369, 67% completion percentage. 24 touchdowns, five picks, which is great. 105-1 quarterback rating. Here's Josh Allen. No. Danny, you don't want to compare these. If Allen continues what he's doing, now he just got a new component. 641 attempts, 420 completions. He's on pace for 5,438 yards. What? This guy's on pace for 1,100 more passing yards. He's also on pace for 46 touchdowns. That doubles your guy almost. <laughs> Wait till I get to my homes. It's even more obnoxious. And 65-5 completion percentage. With a 105-9 quarterback rating. Ranked ahead of Jalen. Here's my homes. It's even more obnoxious. 639 in attempts, 427 in completions. 
5,243 yards, 66 9 in completion percentage. This guy's on pace for 50 touchdowns. This guy's going to throw double the touchdown passes that your guy's going to throw this year. And you're going to try to tell me that Jalen's out playing Mahomes? <laughs> really? Are you kidding, right? You're, you're, you're honestly kidding. You're honestly kidding. He's going to throw for 50. Your guy's on pace to throw for 24. And you're trying to tell me that you think really that Hurts is out playing Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, who are going to throw double the touchdown passes and have a higher quarterback rating, actually. And about 1,200 more passing yards. Are you insane? You are insane. MVP race has nothing to do with who's the better arm. Has nothing to do with it. You would never take Hertz over Burrow in a draft. Nobody would. Here, that's even better. If you had to draft Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, and Patrick Mahomes, where would Jalen Hurts come in on that? Fourth? Yeah, he would. But to Xander's point yesterday, to even be in that conversation with those three other men, Jalen Hurts is going to get paid. Okay? Jalen Hurts is going to get paid. Because if you pay if you pay Kyler Murray the money you're paying him, you're going to pay Hurts that money too. Okay? Hey, don't be a shitbag. Leave my quarterback alone. (laughs) What are you, five? (laughs) First. (laughs) Yeah, taking him over Mahomes. Really? (laughs) Uh, James, why why are you – I'm not hating on him. Tell him I'm trying to keep it grounded because he hasn't won yet. It's going to be a great ride when he wins. Something. I know, GT. Why do people not see through the forest with that? You're on it. GT's right. Fourth best quarterback can win Super Bowls. Absolutely. I mean, you don't hear me talking about Lamar in this conversation right now, do you? You guys need to, like, pump the brakes here. The comment that Xander Krause made yesterday is the most poetic one. So we're talking about Hurts in the Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes conversation. I'll take that. I'll take that. But as fans, you should be greedy. You should be greedy. Okay? Lamar isn't a winner. Jalen is. Um, I don't think that that's the case. Are you trying to suggest to me that you don't think Lamar Jackson's won 73% of his ball games? Are you, are you suggesting that? Let's take a look at that. He's not a winner, huh? He's not a winner. Lamar Jackson stats. Since you say he's not a winner, Lamar Jackson stats. I just saw someone say he's not a winner. Let's see here. Geez, 42 and 15. Where, what, what, what? Led the NFL in touchdown passes. Something Jalen will never. Led the NFL in QBR. He's 42 and 15. Lamar and Jalen are even? I don't think so. Here we go. The Big Sills. NFL Power Rankings. My top 10 teams. 215. Never. Here. N E V E R. Never lead the NFL in passing touchdowns. You heard me. Never. I'm sorry, but 
140 PR and four touchdowns isn't enough for you, Dan? No, it's not. Against the Steelers? Absolutely not. Tug of Viola had a 138. And the Dolphins are moving off of him this offseason. For Lamar Jackson. You want to bet? Tua's having a pretty good year. I guarantee you that the Dolphins move off him. He's not reliable enough. Never. Sports. We'll see if he gets there. I don't. I don't. Top 10. (laughs) Big Sills power rankings. Number 10. As the previously mentioned, I got the Miami Dolphins at number 10. Do you know Tyree Kill is on pace for 2,000 receiving yards? Um, uh, I said his numbers would suffer. His numbers have actually increased. That's pretty remarkable. Big Sill's wrong here. Tyreek Hill is flourishing with the Dolphins, more so. However, you want to hear something? Tyreek Hill's going to put a lot of numbers up in Miami, right? You don't really think that Dolphin team can beat the Chiefs, do you? The Chiefs are going to be Super Bowl contenders. Are the Dolphins? Eh, maybe. I don't know. Chiefs? Yes. Andy Reid? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Number nine, maybe one of the most physically imposing and dominating teams at the point of attack, the Tennessee Titans. By the way, better get Jordan Davis back. Tighten up that run defense of yours a little bit. He's been a factor. You'll be start playing some ball teams now to run the ball here a little bit. I done. Derrick Henry. He, hey, Derrick Henry just needed a little bit more to get going again. You know, now has a, a sixth time in his career, tying OJ and Adrian Peterson for 200-yard rushing games, six. And there they sit, the Titans. Um, at, What's their record? Five and two. So much for needing A.J. Brown. <laughs> A.J. who? I love the stats that the people are putting up. AJ's got more receiving yards than what the Tennessee Titans do. Who cares? They're five and two. And per- currently right now, they got the second best record in the AFC. Well, AJ's got more receiving yards than the entire Titans team. Who gives a shit? They're winning ball games. They're five and two. Vrabel once again has his team winning ball games. They were the champs of the AFC regular season last year. They were the number one seed, and here they are again, hanging in there. How you doing? Take a look at that. Titans are not a contender. They had a very easy schedule. Well, I wouldn't be talking, Brandon, about easy schedules. (laughs) Look at the JV teams. You guys are playing the next two games. Bounced and won again. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> who cares? 7-0. and You're damn right who cares. No one cares about 7-0. and We only care about, what is it? By divisional conference Super Bowl. 3-0. I don't care about 7-0. and I care about 3-0. and You can have all the 7-0s, and 10-0s, 11-0s. I only care about 3-0. 3-0 or possibly 4-0. That's it. That's all you have to concern yourself with. 7-0. Great. Keep it. Put it in your back pocket. Talk about it one day with your kid on your lap. You know, remember when the Eagles started out 8-0? Or do you remember when the Eagles went 3-0 and in 17? 3-0. That's all that matters. 3 and 0. Number 8. The New York Football Giants. I can't believe I'm putting that pathetic team there, but I have to. 
the Giants. I know they got beat by the greatness of. I, I, by the way, I can't put Seattle in here. I, I just cannot put Seattle in here. I cannot. So I got the Giants there at eight. Number seven, and rapidly improving. This is the Big Sills Power Rankings, NFL Weekly Power Rankings. To show you that I'm fair, number seven. The San Francisco 49ers. Rapidly improving, though. Get those guys healthy. Christian McCaffrey, man. That guy looked like Marcus Allen. I mean, Christian McCaffrey looks like Marcus Allen. This guy runs in between the tackles. He catches the ball. I mean, he's incredible. Throws touchdowns. Okay. Number seven, the San Francisco 49ers. And the greatness of Jimmy G. Love that guy. Paisan. Got you, brother. Paisan, stick together. Got you, brother. <laughs> Number six. What a move. Roquan Smith to the Ravens. Ravens have to play better defense if they're going to win anything. I don't believe they're a true contender until we see how they play. Their back end stinks. Okay? It really does. Their back end stinks, man. Um, but they they added the best tackler in the NFL. Okay? Tomlinson did it before C, uh, Christian McCaffrey. True. You're right. Here now, we're in the top five best football teams, according to Big Sills. I agree, artist. Roquan, I'd love to have had him in Philly. Top five. At number five. The Dallas Cowboys. With the greatness of Dak Prescott. Cowboys, though, here, here's what they have. Here's my problem, too. And you guys are right. I saw some of you talking about this yesterday. Bro, you can't give 29 points up to a shitty Chicago team. You cannot. And 240 yards rushing and call yourself the best team and the best defense. The best defense in the NFL is in San Francisco. It's in San Francisco. And then the Eagles are second. The Cowboys, I don't know. You can't. Let me say this to you. The Eagles ain't giving up to – well, we'll see against the Titans. But I'll say this to you. It will be a long day in hell before you see the Eagle defense give up 200 yards rushing to some team. I want to see that day, and I don't believe there's going to be a team that's going to run the ball for 200 yards on that 49er team when they're healthy. Fred's a great linebacker in the middle. Nick Bose is the best or second-best defensive lineman in the league. That's a good-looking football team, man. Um, the Niners, and that defense is good. They're going to rapidly go up this list. But that Cowboy team, I got them at five. But I'm telling you, you you can't have the 27th-ranked offense and turn around and give up 240 yards rushing. You cannot do that and call yourself the best defense. I guess that's why Michael Parsons gets a little bit angry at me on my Twitter page. I think they got fool's gold sometimes in that whole thing, Okay. Hey, look, they get to the quarterback and they do a nice job in pass protection or on and, and pass defense. But when it comes to running against them, you can run the ball at them. You can run the ball at them. James, the Niners are awesome. Awesome. You didn't beat him a year ago. Jimmy G's already 1 0 versus your boy. <laughs> Garoppolo's 1 0 versus your guy. And he came to your building and did it. Hey, Don. They get zero credit for beating the Rams. Well, you get zero credit for a 140 quarterback rating against the shitty Steelers then, or what you'll do Thursday night. You get no credit there either, okay? So we're even. Fair enough. They get no credit for beating the defending champs in their own building. You get no credit for what you did against the Steelers or against 
the Texans. Fair? Got a handshake on it. We're good. We're good. We're good. Fair? You want to play that game? I'll play it too. You get no credit for beating the Rams at their building. Then you get no credit for beating what you did in a great performance against the Steelers. Worst team in 55 years. Yeah, Cooper Rush was 20 to 17 in the fourth against you too. Rams are not good. Steelers are trash. I know they are. Here we go. Number four. Two, they get the tight end from Detroit. Dan Campbell won't be the head coach at the end of the year. That'll be another coaching change. They're waving the white flag. The Minnesota Vikings, by the way, to the Eagles' credit, I say this to you. Right now, today, on November 1, I do think the Eagles have beaten the two best teams in the NFC. Okay? I do. Okay? Got to be fair. I think you've beaten the two best teams in the NFC. All right? Yeah, and Jalen lost to Danny Dimes last year. (laughs) Danny Dimes. Danny Dimes beat him. Worst quarterback in the division. Oh, wait, second best quarterback in the division. Oh, wait, that guy's now sitting. Tyler Heineke. Here we are now in the top three. The Big Seals power rankings. Let me let me reset here. Ten, I got the Dolphins. Nine, I got the Titans. Eight, I got the Gigante Giants. Seven, the Niners. Six, the Ravens. Five, Cowboys. Four, Vikings. Here are the top three teams. Number three, it's with great respect on a great season that they're having so far. And the quarterback is continuing to play as good as he is. The Kansas City Chiefs are number three. I think they need a pass rusher. And so far, they didn't land one. I don't know, man. They don't have a running game, really, and they don't have a pass rusher. I think that's going to catch them in the playoffs again. Dude, that football team's not the same team it was three years ago when they had pass rushers and they ran the ball. And quite frankly, to be candid, they really haven't been as good as they were when they had Kareem Hunt in the building. Kareem Hunt caught the ball. Ran with the ball. Did some really good stuff there. I, I I just, I don't know, man. I think Kansas City has some deficiencies. I really do. Number two. God, I love this team. Number two. The Philadelphia Eagles. Playing the most consistent football of any team in the league, not playing down to their competition. Their quarterback is improving every week. Their coach is improving every week. Their offensive coordinator should get looks as a coach and potential head coach in the NFL. I mean, there's some quality dudes that are running that offense right now. The offensive line coach, get this, the offensive line coach is the best in the business. You got an offensive coordinator who's 16 and 4 since he's taken over the play calling duties. You got a head coach who's being molded into a really fine looking head coach. As I predicted, Bills and Eagles in the Super Bowl in Glendale. And the number one team. Now they got a running back today, too. Wow. Wow. The Buffalo Bills with the best quarterback in the National Football League and Josh Allen. I said Allen would be the most valuable player by the end of the year. I never thought Jalen would be in the conversation. He's 
moved himself up into where I had him this week, number one. But Josh Allen, in my opinion, I've been saying it all year, he's going to win the Most Valuable Player Award. And his football team is playing to that too. Buffalo Bills, number one. So here are the top 10 teams. Dolphins, 10. Titans, 9. Giants, 8. 49ers, 7. See, 49ers are not healthy yet. <clears throat> they haven't been all year. But they clearly have one of the top three rosters in the league. And that's nothing to the other two teams. Hey, it's not the Bills and Eagles' responsibility to feel sorry for the 49ers because they're not healthy. But they got to get their guys on the field. I can't remember when they had a full unit in a ball game, right? When did, hey, the 49ers, maybe they should take a page out of what the Eagles are doing, man, when it comes to preparing for an upcoming season. I don't know. Hey, so far you got to give Howie the credit here. I'm not practicing these guys because they're healthier than San Francisco. Ravens six, Cowboys five, Vikings four, Chiefs three, Eagles two, close, Bills one. Yeah, by the way, that Bills and Eagles differential is not a gigantic. Like here, watch this. The top three teams. In my Big Seals power rankings, Bills, Eagles, Chiefs, I think they're kind of right here. And then the gap between the Vikings and Chiefs, I think is substantial. I, I, I don't believe the Vikings defense is still good enough to win multiple playoff games in the postseason. They're going to have to show – I think they got enough offensive firepower to play with anybody. But to me, the problem I have with the Vikings is on the defensive side of the ball. I don't think they get home enough. Okay? I, I don't. So those three teams, Bills, Eagles, Chiefs at the top, they're kind of right there, right? They're all bunched up. And, and quite frankly, I would say this. The only difference between the three teams is this. The Eagles are more complete as a football team and their roster's deeper. But the only thing that keeps the Bills and Chiefs in the game is that their quarterback's better than Hurts. I mean, Mahomes, and like, like Xander said, Sills, that's not, a, that's not an awful thing. When we're talking about Hurts, Mahomes, and Allen. And by the way, I think that gap's substantial too. Okay? Michael says, nothing wrong with your rankings. I think it's fair, only because the Bills are favored from the start. Not bad at all. Go birds, but and and Michael, know this: it they're they're not gigantic, they're not gigantic gaps here. The I think the here's how I think the Eagles can beat the Chiefs. I'm going to hit on that. Hey Dan, this season Hurts is ahead of Jimmy G on your top ten quarterbacks. He sure is. That's because Jimmy G wasn't allowed to practice with his team. He wasn't even given a playbook. Actually, if you think about it, Garoppolo has only been practicing for four or five weeks. He was hurt in the offseason, and now his team is getting healthier and healthier, and he's starting to win games, and they just annihilated the Rams. No one gives him any credit for the fact that he was on a different field for two months. Nobody was talking to him. He wasn't throwing to receivers. He wasn't even allowed to mingle with the coaching staff or anybody until week three of the NFL. I mean, you guys are making it sound like this guy's been in the building there. He wasn't. He was on a different field practicing. That's not an excuse, Brian. That's a fact. See, here, here's Brian, an excuse that you didn't give the guy a playbook. He wasn't allowed to practice with his teammates for two months. And you're telling me that's an excuse? <laughs> no, that's a fuck up by the 49ers. Here, this is going to sound terrible. Thank God Trey Lance got hurt. Because the Niners would be nowhere with that dude. And God forbid, I don't mean that, that I'm happy that he's hurt because I hope he comes back and becomes a superstar in the NFL. Nobody's wishing anybody injured ever. I would never hope for that. But as an organization, Garoppolo is saving the season for them. Trey Lance was never going to save the season. 
they're never making that move for Christian McCaffrey or Trey Lance as a starting quarterback because that team would have been miles out of it. Great list. Here's, though, how I think the Niners. Well, no, let me, let me, let me, I'll go back to the Niners. Here's how I think the Eagles can hang with the Chiefs and the Bills. There's two things that the Eagles do superior to those two teams. Okay? Here's the two things that they do that are better. The Eagles play. You know, you know, it's funny. People go like this. Well, the Eagles haven't played their best football. Yes, they have. Yes, you are. You are who you are now. You're not playing any better. You'll be more. You have been the most consistent team all year. Every week has been a microcosm of how and who you are. You're not going to be any more than what you are right now. Your identity set. You're multifaceted. You can run the ball. If you have to throw, you can. You don't turn the ball over, and you don't have high percentage turnover plays in your offense. You're not getting home so much on defense, but it's enough. Your turnovers are because of the great secondary play. Your roster's deep. Your running game. You got a guy on pace for 1,400 yards. You're not going to play. I keep hearing people go, they haven't played their best ball. Yes, you have. This is who you are. After eight, what are you, seven and one or seven and oh? After seven games, you're not going to be any more than who you are. This is your identity. Now, does it come easier? Do you have more confidence? All of that will play into it. You'll become a more confident team, but you're not going to get any better than what you are. AJ's going to go for 138, 155. Next week, Devontae's going to go for 101. Another week, Jalen's going to throw for 155, 19 of 25 or something like that. That's who you are. Well, we haven't played it. Yes, you've played your best ball, and your best ball is why you're 7-0. and Okay? That's right, Michael. Every player on that Eagle team knows their role. And you now have formed your identity. You know how many teams in the NFL don't have an identity? Look, it's unprecedented how many teams that are under 500 right now still trying to find an identity. The Eagles found their identity, I'd say, after week four. I just gave the greatest compliment to the Eagles, and this guy, Toilet Face, is telling me negative sills. Unbelievable. You, dude, you hear what you want to hear. That's not what I said. Here's how I think they could beat Chiefs and Bills. Okay. Now we'll see what the new addition is with the running game now for the Bills to see how they're going to implement that. I think Ken Dorsey's done a great job. Okay. So the Bucks have played their best. Yeah. Bucks are injured. It's a mass unit. You think they're getting better? You think the Bucks are going to get better? Where? They haven't been good since week one. All of a sudden, they're going to get better at three and five? You're lucky you're in the shitty NFC South. Brady may string a couple games together, but where do you see this great offense? Running game is non-existent. The O-line is in tatters. Three guys aren't coming back this year in the O-line. Gronk's not there. You're not getting nothing out of the tight end position. And Mike Evans looks like he's quit on the season at times. Devin White, you see what Sapp said? Should have his uh, captaincy taken away from him for lack of effort. Lack of effort. Bucks lost Shaq Barrett who was actually one of the only guys out there with Vita Vea that was playing the last game with any kind of heart against the Ravens. The rest of that team has waved a white flag, dude. Bucks are done, dude. I agree with Joseph. 
Brady's going to string a – Brady may get him to the playoffs. That team's going nowhere. Their old line is in tatters. Okay? Joshua says, Sills, we don't lose games. We don't lose games that we're supposed to win. The other teams – Josh, it, it, it's, it's a testament to the Eagles and how well they play. Hey, Brian, don't worry about toilet face. He's okay. They miss, they miss Bruce Arians. It's okay, toilet face. I'll give you a reprieve. Don't worry about it, kid. You can take the rest of the day off, and if you want to come back tomorrow, it's all good. Don't worry about it, son. <laughs> now I know what you're talking about, Xander. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I know what you're talking about. It's okay, Toilet Face. I like you, man. You're all good. So did you, Sills, did you make up that name, Toilet Face, for that guy? Yeah, I did. <laughs> hey, PT, it's all good, man. Thank you for being here, man. I'm having fun. You're having fun with me, too, so it's all good. Right? Sills, what do you think about that terrible trade that the Jags made with Calvin Ridley? Dude, you, I mean... Hey, we'll take Calvin Ridley next year. <laughs> Jesus, criminy, man, right? Don't worry. Hey, don't don't pick on Toilet Face. He's a good dude. We need Toilet Face. Toilet Face is good people here, okay? You guys call me names, so, you know, Big Sills is known for making names up for people. Yeah, junior, I, I call Xander Junior. <laughs> Hey, don't, Junior. <laughs> All good in the hood, Big Sills. Thank you, William. I'm only kidding. PT, we're good, dude. I like Toilet Face, though, better. Hey, Xander, you cheering for the Vols? <laughs> hey, Vols are going to come get some this weekend, ain't they? Dude, I don't know how Adam Zimmer died. I know, I know Mike Zimmer threw the Cowboys and Jimmy Johnson. That's a terrible story. What was he, 28 when he died? That's a terrible story, man. So how many black shirts do you own? Let me see. Fat guys. Okay, hey, Jeb, do you want me to tell you? Fat guys wear black shirts. We wear dark clothes. I mean, is that what you want to hear? Fat guys and big guys wear dark shirts. You got me. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely, man. That's a sad story. Let me get to this, though. I, this is how I do think the Eagles can, can beat the Bills and the Chiefs here. By the way, um, I want to show you the odds in the MVP race. And I want to look at the divisions. Oh, my God. And the top 10 quarterback rankings. That's coming up. Where's your boy? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Let me take a break. I got to write this down because you know my CTE kicks in. Danny goes, I'm fat also. Hey, you know what, man? I was in the gym for 33 years, bench pressing 605, 800 squat. My days of sitting around worrying about whether or not I eat a half a sandwich or a full sandwich are over. <laughs> Someone goes like this. So what are you doing about it? What do you mean? What am I doing? I spent 30 years, eight hours a day working out. I don't eat half of sandwiches now. Someone goes, hey, Sills, what do you want? You want a piece of pie? Watch this. Hey, Greasy. Someone goes, hey, Sills, you want a slice of pie? I go, no, no, no. I want a hunk. <laughs> no, no, no. I want a hunk of pie. But Sills don't eat slices of pie. My grandpa taught me that. No, no, no. I want a hunk. <laughs> hit the like button. We got a lot to hit on here, man. Thank you guys so much for being here, man. Totally having a great time with you guys today. Please hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit.